Hey there flock, Mike here from Epic Duck Studios and welcome to the Epic Hobby. Today I'm going to be painting Grashrak Fellhoof from Grashraks to Spoilers, the new warband from Warhammer Underworld's Beast Grave. In this video I'm going to be focusing on getting the model tabletop ready as quickly as possible and to do that I'm going to be using primarily contrast paints. Now I've already gone ahead and base coated the entire model. I used an airbrush for this and actually used Reaper Bloodless Skin. I was just out of Wraithbone at the time, and this is a pretty comparable color. It's maybe a little bit more green, but not noticeably. And honestly, the contrast paints work very well with it. So my normal approach to a miniature, especially with contrast paint, is to start with the hardest to reach areas and work my way outward. So I kind of want to do the skin early in the process because it's sort of one of those details that's wrapped by a lot of other details. We've also got areas like the fur here and his like tabard in the middle, which definitely frame in some of the skin as well. So I'm gonna actually paint the tabard first, and then the fur, and then we're gonna do skin after that. So the tabard here, I'm actually just gonna go over that with a little bit of Basilicanum Gray. Now we're gonna come back to Basilicanum Gray a lot. I like to say Basilicanum Gray is the Frank's Red Hot of contrast paint. You put that on everything. Now prior to this model, I also painted Drachnar from the same warband. And Drachnar has a lot of metallic details, and with metal details, I like to base coat them with a metal before I start any of my contrast paint. That's just not the case here, because Grashrak just doesn't have those details. You know, he's not carrying an axe, his horns aren't plated in steel. He's just a big, squishy wizard. I actually don't know how squishy he is, I haven't looked at his stat line yet. But... He's a wizard, so let's let's assume there's some squish involved. Now there were some little I wanna say they were stones just kind of sitting there beside his tabard, his loincloth. And I just wanna hit them with the basilicanum gray while I'm at it. You know, if we come back to these models and detail them later, we can pick those out and make them a different color at the time, but for now. That at least gets them outlined, gets them, you know, they're noticeably different detail now. And that's good enough for a lot of our purposes. So I'm going to just do the back tabard here as well, or the, uh, what's a loincloth on your butt? I keep calling them tabards. I feel like that's the wrong word. Oh, he does have a little dagger here. I'm going to actually make the assumption that... It is a stone dagger, and we're just not really going to worry too much about it right now. So I'm looking at his artwork, and it actually looks like the rest of his clothing here is also basilicanum gray, or at least is gray. Now this is where I start to, you can see I'm getting a little bit of it even on areas that should be skin. And that's why, like I say, I like to kind of work inside out. And in this case, I would have preferred to have done the skin first. But this is kind of the same piece of clothing. So it does make sense to kind of try and do it all at the same time. Now I'm reaching the end of what I can do with a large brush like this. I probably need to start using something a little bit smaller. You can see I'm occasionally kind of, you know, painting onto the next detail. And you really don't want to do that with contrast paint. I mean, paint in general, it's a bad idea. You know, in general, you want to stay focused, but it's extra challenging with contrast paint, especially if you then try to cover an area up with a lighter color. Now, if you do get some contrast paint in the wrong spot, it is far from an irreversible mistake. You can just bring your base coat color back in and touch up around it. And you will see me do that from time to time. Just I'll grab a little bit of that bloodless flesh and just touch up a few spots. So I'm gonna probably bring out a little bit of the, uh, the base coat color and just touch it. You can see I've got some of this up on some of the straps and so on. Where I really didn't intend to have it. Actually, we want the same color on his... Uh, I don't know what you call this garment. I mean, it's not really a mask, but that's about the closest name I can come up with. Now, 
Now sometimes when you get contrast paint where you don't want it, you can siphon it out just using a brush. It's handy to actually keep a second brush on standby for that. One that doesn't already have paint on it, and that way you can just kind of pull the paint away. All right, so we're going to give that a few minutes to dry, then we're going to come back in and work on the skin. So before I go any further, I'm just going to come in with my base coat color and do a quick few touch-ups. I just noticed there was this area sort of under the arm here where the contrast gray, the basilicanum gray, covered up some of the exposed skin. And we also have a problem here on the uh, horns as well. So I'm just going to touch those up. Maybe some other ones, but those were the most prominent ones I could see. I'm just going to just re-highlight this little bird skull here too. The more I look at them, the more I realize that all those little stones are actually bird skulls. I'm just going to bring this one back a little bit too. We're going to try and leave the uh, the rope holding it in place as gray though. Little stones that I don't quite know what they're for. They're kind of painted blue in the original box art. So I guess we'll do something similar. A couple straps here that also just got blown away by the gray. We'll just give that a moment to dry before we carry on. Okay, I'm going to work on Grashrak's skin next, and for that I'm going to use Gilman Flesh with a little bit of contrast medium added to it. The reason for that is that it's just going to make it a little bit more translucent and just make the flesh a little lighter. Because we want these uh, beast men to look pretty pale. So news, I'm just getting a couple drops of Gilman Flesh onto my wet palette, and I'm just going to bring in a little contrast medium and mix the two. Now it's roughly a 50-50 mix. Now we'll say with contrast painting, it's easier to make a mistake and fix it than it is to avoid the mistake in the first place. So don't be afraid to just kind of slop a color on and then do some base coat touch-ups after the fact. It's a lot easier sometimes than just not making the mistake in the first place. I'm sure right now as I wrap the brush around the leg, I'm probably hitting some fur. And that's okay. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I got lucky there. But my luck could change at any moment. Now I'm going to bring some Volipus pink into his mouth after, mostly to detail his tongue. But that'll build just fine over a thinned layer of Gilman flesh. So right now I'm just kind of letting the paint settle in the mouth. I'm not too worried about it. And that's it. actually got a little leather strap here. And that's going to be probably all horn. Let's get some skin there just in case. Get his ear again. And then we just have the arms to go. And I'm being, you know, fairly liberal with the application of this color. So if I mess up and get some in, is you know, there's some sort of uh, fur here on his shoulder. He's got the, you know, cloth or leather wrap on his forearm. If I accidentally get some there, it's pretty easy to touch up and cover it with a base coat after. Whereas if you just forget to lay some contrast paint down, it's really hard to blend another layer of contrast paint into an existing one and have it look seamless. You know, typically when one contrast layer goes over another, one of them ends up looking kind of splotchy. You know, it dries, it has a very, very short drying time. It's much shorter than, you know, even just normal paint. And what that means is to get it to do its contrast effect as it dries, you have to basically get it onto a bunch of surfaces simultaneously. All right, we're back to letting the color dry again. So there's two colors now I'm going to use really prominently on the model, and that's going to be Skeleton Horde and Snake Bite Leather. Skeleton Horde is going to be all of the bones, including some bones on the base, as well as things like the antlers or horns. And Snake Bite Leather is going to be almost every little bit of clothing left over. I'm also going to use some Flesh Terrors Red, just for some pouches and a little extra detail on the staff. And that's mostly just to match the fact that they're red in the box art. 
Gonna use some Volipus Pink for his mouth. For most of his fur, I'm gonna use Apothecary White. Now on his base, we've got a collection of different bones and skulls, and then just the, you know, the actual ground itself. And for the ground, I'm gonna use about a 50-50 mix of Militarum Green and Apothecary White. And that's primarily just to match the color I've already used on Drachnar. Then obviously we'll use Skeleton Horde for the bone, and I'm gonna bring Basilicanum Gray back in for all the rocky bits. So in no particular order, I'm gonna start working through all those colors. This is the Volipus Pink. We're really just bringing that in just to make his tongue look, well, more like a tongue. So far, painting tongues is the only thing I've used Volipus Pink for. This is the Flesh Terrors Red. I'm also going to use a little bit of the Skeleton Horde for a few wood details. So there's the end of this little, uh, we're going to call it a wand. Maybe it's more of a dagger. It actually ends in a couple drips of blood. And I'm going to use just a little bit of technical blood for the Blood God for that. So I'm also going to use this for his hooves and all of those bones on the base. What I find just a little bit funny about this is I just recently painted up my uh, Warcry Warband, the Untamed Beasts, using entirely contrast paint as well. And the similarities between the two warbands is uh, very striking. You know, as much as Untamed Beasts are human and these are, you know, Beastmen, the Untamed Beasts and the Beastmen have a lot in common, both like sort of costuming wise and equipment wise. And it feels to be very thematic to actually keep them together on the table. Now, I realize one is Warcry and one is Underworld, so there's that. They all work together in AOS, though, somehow. Now we can see the inside of the back of the skull, so we're going to hit that as well. And we've still got the hooves and the basing elements to go. Oh, another little tooth right there. And actually I'm going to use this for the wood of the staff, the same way we did for the uh, handle of the dagger and the handle of uh, Drachnar's axe as well. So many skulls. That's so you know it's a GW product. Ooh, a spine. What do I win? Gonna pull out a Gorgrunt of fur just for the pouch on his belt. Maybe a very lightly used color here. Now the apothecary white for the fur. Can't forget he's got a little beard here too.
Right, the fur is almost done. All right, we're gonna leave all that to dry, then come back to the model. All right, next I'm gonna use a little Basilicanum Gray, and that's gonna hit the rocks on the base, and as well, I'm just gonna use it on, I guess we'll call that a dagger? Yeah, it's a dagger. We're gonna use it on the blade of the dagger. I'm then gonna use Wildwood on the leather straps, the little like ropes here kind of holding this little medallion up. And there's also actually a bunch of straps on sort of the back side of the skull here. I'm just going to hit those with Wildwood as well. Oh, there's actually one little skull in there I missed. We're just going to hit that with uh, the silicon of gray anyway. I'm just not going to worry about it. It's half a skull. She got it from one side. It's just kind of coming around and getting it again. So, is it a rock-shaped skull or a skull-shaped rock? You decide. Okay, that looks like it. I also forgot to uh, just do the fur around his hooves. So I'm just going to bring out some apothecary white really quickly for that. Because that's not going to be adjacent to any of the leather. I'm just going to switch to a smaller brush for this. Alright, now onto that wildwood. Gonna hit up a few of these little little ropes with it too. You can see you can use the wildwood like straight over Basilicanum Grey. Works just fine. The Basilicanum barely even changes how the wildwood looks. So when I'm, you know, applying this brown to this detail, I just want to make sure I'm working my way inside the skull here, because these do wrap almost all the way around. They actually do come around the front of the skull if you look really closely. Just very, very lightly. There's a little, you know, bit here in the middle. And a little bit right in here. funny my original assessment of wildwood was that I didn't really like the color it was too dark I thought didn't really like what it did but using it on very very small details like this that also have you know a fairly decent you know groove in their surface so you get a good amount of the contrast action happening I'm actually really liking it for this I'm actually going to switch to some snake bite leather just for the wraps around his wrist, just for some different tone. And then we're going to let that all dry, come back, finish up the stones. I actually forgot to bring you a silicanum gray out for this dagger, so we'll do that as well. And I might as well hit, there's also a smaller dagger on his back. Probably should do that as well. He's got a very flinted appearance. What I want to do is there's some little blood drops here in the end. We want to leave those mostly alone. I'm going to hit those with a little Citadel Technical Blood for the Blood God after. And yeah, there is the little dagger here. I thought it would actually be sheathed, but it turns out it's just kind of stuck through a loop. 
So we'll do this half in Basilicanum Gray and the other half in Skeleton Horde. So there we've got our Snake Bite Leather. I'm just going to use a little bit of this. I'm mostly doing this just so it's not the same, you know, we add some just extra color to the model. It's not quite as uh, monotonous if we just include a little bit more color. Otherwise, I could just do this in the wild wood, and it would fit in just fine. It would even fit in fine if I used the Basilicanum Gray, too. We have that on the clothing around his uh, torso. And we got the wrap on this wrist. And it looks more like it's a solid piece of leather instead of, you know, a bunch of cording wrapped around, as the other ones have been. Now, for all these little stones hanging out everywhere, I'm actually going to use some Aethermatic Blue. Make them look a little bit magical. Now that one, there's actually a little bit of rope we missed there. There's always little touch-ups to do, even when you're doing contrast paint. A little tooth here. It's okay, you don't have to get everything right the first time out. It's just paint. We can be chill about it. Grab some uh, skeleton horde here in a second and touch up those little skulls and teeth we missed. Just checking if there's any more of these stones, but I think that's it. Have a little skeleton horde. Just gonna use that on the handle of this knife. This little tooth right here. There's actually just a little dead spot there I just missed. That's actually a little bit of a leather strap. I just realized that it's not part of the skull there. The little birdie skull. That. Yeah, that's the little tooth just wrapping around to this side. The other little tooth here. Nice thing about Skeleton Horrors, it's light enough that if I get it on any of these sort of adjacent surfaces, it's really not going to tint them too much. So I'm not overly concerned about that. Alright, let's get a little blood for the blood god out here. And then the last thing to do is just mix up the uh, green for the base. So this is just going to go on right there. Might need to do two coats of that. So for the base, I used a, when I did this on Drachnar, I used a mix of Apothecary White and Militarum Green. Roughly 50-50, and that gives you just a nice kind of swampy green. And what that gives us is sort of a really nice, light, mossy green. And just work that in around these other details on the base. And the cool thing is it's actually okay if it gets up on those other details because it just makes it look like the uh, like a moss or a lichen is overtaking them. There's really nothing wrong with that. I feel like he picked a really uncomfortable place to stand though. There's really nowhere to even to put his feet down without just stepping on some poor schmuck's severed head. So it's okay if it gets up on some details, it just makes them look kind of mossy and gross anyway. Yeah, we can actually even intentionally do it, just kind of bring that green in. Alright, we're just going to give that a few minutes to dry, and then we're going to paint the rim of the base, and I believe we're done. Just one quick little detail I missed. There's actually a small leather strap holding his, uh, I guess, mask onto his head, so I'm just going to hit that with a little bit of wildwood as well. And doing that I can see there's actually a little bit of fur sort of above this strap that was also missed. So I'll hit that up too. I almost had a little spill there. I went to shake my pot of apothecary white and didn't realize it was still open from the last time I used it. So. So that's something to keep on your mind. Just you know, check if your paints are closed before you shake them. Alright, that's all we needed there. So the last thing to do now is just black out the edge of the base. And for that, I'm going to use Reaper Noir Black. I just happen to really like it. It's a bit of an off black. It's kind of got that old t-shirt kind of color to it. But obviously you can black out the rim of your base with whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be black. I've heard some people really like Goblin Green. I really got into miniature painting just 
I'd say at the tail end of the Goblin Green period, but I think even past that. There were certainly still Goblin Green armies floating around pretty commonly when I started playing and collecting, but a lot of people weren't really doing new work like that. Back when fantasy was bright and shiny and wasn't trying to also be grimdark. All right, there we go. All right, there we go. So the one thing I didn't really do was detail the eyes at all. Um, with this being a contrast focused, you know, minimal effort tabletop paint job, it's not super necessary to do so. But definitely that'd be one of the first things you'd want to do if you start detailing this model. So there we've got two of these down. The two big heavy hitters in this warband. The other four are all hunters, are all roughly the same scale. And I'm going to do just one video kind of collecting the four of them together. Hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed that one, please hit like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notifications when I post new content in the future. If you want to take your support even further, you can do so at patreon.com slash epicduck. Every little bit helps me keep the lights on and the paint flowing, puts new models on the table so I can make interesting videos, and most importantly, keeps a roof over my family's head and food on the table. Honestly, Patreon is what makes doing this every single day possible. You can also catch me six times a week at twitch.tv slash epicduckstudios. I'd really love it if you came by to watch my show sometime and clicked follow. A big thank you to everyone who has supported my stuff, both past and present, over the years. It's been a wild ride, and I couldn't do this without the fans and all of the wonderful flockers out there. The hobby community is just an amazing group of people, and you make this worth doing. So let's keep doing this together for years to come. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, do something epic.